In this video, I'm going to go over how I made a G.I. Joe remote control mauler. I'm going to show why I did an RC mauler, then break down the RC components, then how to add the motor drive and the steering, then the turret rotation, the elevation of the cannon, the third seat, and then we'll look at the RC mauler in action. So why an RC mauler? I guess because the mauler is one of my favorite vehicles. Probably because I never had one as a kid. But I've since made a video about how I fixed one up and another video about the origins of the Mauler tank design. And to have an RC Mauler would just be a dream. I remember as a kid getting a Radio Shack remote control Sherman tank and that was really fun and really cool. But it wasn't until I got a Tamiya Hornet that I really understood the potential of RC and I had the fun of actually building my own RC vehicle. This taught me about servos, motors, speed controllers, all that kind of stuff. But more importantly, it introduced me to the Tamiya catalog, and this just blew my mind. In the back were realistic looking tanks with all kinds of motors and servos and controls in them and cutaways, and you could see them riding around in the sand. But these were definitely not something I was going to get for Christmas, so I'd have to wait on that. Then more recently, I was getting into Lego with my kids and made an infrared controlled tank based on a Kobe brick kit. This was pretty fun and got me back into the idea of having an RC tank. And so I then got a 1 scale Hen Long tank, which is the same scale as the Tamiya's and copies a lot of the technology as those Tamiya tanks. So I kind of felt like I finally had my RC tank. And then I saw this video and I was like, what is going on here? That's a GI Joe tank and it looks like it's remote control. This looked like the ultimate combination of those Tamiya kits and the toys we all loved as kids, the G.I. Joe tanks. And then I saw this video and I was like, wow, this looks a lot like that other video, but that other video is like 10 or 15 years old. I eventually got in contact with the creator of the video, Joe Mahler Works, through HisTank.com. And he explained that he was also the guy that made that older video. And so then he makes a video showing how to do that, how to make the RC Mahler. And I realized this is possible. I could have an RC Mauler. I would do this. I just needed to gather the necessary parts. And so I did. And I got prepared. And it's all his fault <laughs> that I did this. So I'm just making this video to kind of show my own journey through this. And the things I figured out or learned or mistakes I made. But um, definitely go check out Joe Mueller Works' um, YouTube channel. It's an awesome resource. I thought it might be useful if I took a minute just to break down how RC cars work, RC vehicles work. So just talking about their components real quickly. If you understand all that, then skip this section. What you see here is the speed controller we're using for the RC Mauler project. This just controls how much voltage goes to the motors and the different servos and different parts of the RC tank. This is the remote control. You're probably familiar with this. It's just got some joysticks that we use to move the tank around and also, you know, make the turret move and the, the gun elevate. The controller comes with the receiver. That's this little box. So the signal goes from the controller. The receiver receives the signal. And then that connects to the speed controller. And that tells what power to go where and when and, you know, to make this motor go forward or backwards. And for the tank project, we have... Uh, two motors that are connected to a gearbox and a drive shaft and so those will connect to the speed controller and the controller will tell which motor to run or both motors to run in what direction they should go and that'll drive the wheels which will spin the track and make the tank go or stop. This is a servo. It's just like a little motor that plugs into the receiver and with the controller you can tell it's a spin one way or another. In an RC plane you'd use this to move the flaps and the tank we're going to use it to elevate the gun up or down. And here's the battery, one of the critical parts of the tank. Without that, you're not going to go anywhere. And last is the turret rotation motor. So this is a special motor that's just going to turn a gear that's going to rotate the turret. And so what's neat about this speed controller is that it can control two motors and it can also control um, a turret rotation motor. So the first step to starting with the mauler was gathering all the pieces. One of the biggest problems was getting all the axles. They're really expensive on eBay, so I had to make a bunch. I was also too cheap to buy a new battery, so I just cannibalized the one off of a rock crawler that I already had. That meant that I had to redo some of the connections to the speed controller because they didn't match with the battery. 
and I'll have links to all this stuff in the video description below. Here's my first test of the um, all the parts working together, and you can see the motors like you know going backward, forward, left and right, which is great. So you can see the batteries connected there to the speed controller, and then that's wired up. And here I'm using the turret motor, and you can see it's spinning, and it's nice that you can um, change the speed. I also wired up a little power switch between the battery and the speed controller, just making it easier to turn the power on and off. So I was pretty excited that test went well, so it was time to solder all those connections together. So they were just twisted together so I could easily like change things up if something didn't work or I'd done it backwards. And so I just wrapped those up with electrical tape as you can see here. And then I'm doing a test to make sure I didn't mess anything up when I did the soldering. And you can see there the, um, the one stick is linked to the motors. So um, the speed controller is interpreting those movements of the stick to give power to one wheel or the other or run one motor or the other. And so this is really good. The guts of it work. And here you can see the layout, so you understand, um, you know, the connection of everything, similar to that diagram I went over earlier. And the next part was pulling the wheel off of the motor. So this was a little tough. You've really got to, like, pull the wheel off of those motors so you can then take this wheel, which is the drive wheel from the mauler, and add that. And that takes a little bit of cutting. You've got to shave off some of the, the length on that because it's a little too long. And then here you can see the wheel just kind of pushes onto the axles of the motors and the actual Mauler G.I. Joe wheels are being driven now by that motor. And so it's pretty much ready to go. What's great about the Mauler is the hull is pretty big, so you don't have to worry about fitting all the little bits in there too tightly. Um, and everything seemed pretty good. So the next step was just attaching the, the kind of, you know, suspension, axle things that hold on the wheels. And so, like I said, I'd gathered a bunch of those, made a bunch of those. So I just put those on, you know, it's just a couple screws, really easy to do. And um, just getting excited about putting wheels on this and then it would be ready for the tracks and then um, ready to test drive. So that didn't take long to get ready, put it on the floor, powered it up and it rolled. This was such an awesome, exciting moment because pretty much now I had an RC Mauler. Like I just had to put the top hull on it and the turret and it would be just like the one I saw in the video. I was happy with the control, you know, testing just to make sure it moved um, forward, backward, left, right. Um, you know, dealt with that little bit of carpet, all fine. The tracks weren't coming off. The wheels all were rolling good. Everything looked good and checked out. And so it was time to kind of celebrate, you know, let's use this, this new toy we've got with this motor and stuff. And so um, I got together some Joes, put the, the hull back together, and built a little obstacle course with some of my kids' blocks and ran it around on that. And it was just a blast. I had the Mobat going too, just as a comparison. Guys falling off of it. But the Mobat was great. I mean, it's still a great toy, but, you know, it just runs forward until you, you know, like, turn the direction. But being able to control the, um, you know, the mauler, go backward, forward change the direction, run over some guys. I should have gotten some Cobra guys to run over, but, um, you know, just kind of like jumping off the blocks and running over the blocks. This was that mashup of the Tamiya and the G.I. Joe tanks that I'd always wanted. Turret rotation was the next thing I wanted to hit, and I wasn't sure exactly how I wanted to do this. I looked at my uh, Tiger tank and saw how that was done, and it looked like it was pretty much just a gear with that motor driving it, so... I made this this gear, I modeled it and 3D printed it and made sure the teeth meshed up with the motor I had for the turret rotation and I just hot glued it to the um, the bottom part of the Mauler turret and set it up and it worked. You can see here I'm using the controller to uh, you know send the signal to the receiver and that's making that motor run and as the motor turns it turns that gear which turns the turret and it's as simple as that. The only thing was, um, you know, it's hard to find a gear like this. I tried looking on eBay for the right size, but couldn't find it. So that's why I ended up making one. And that turned out just to be easier. That way I could get exactly what I wanted. And I even modeled some um, kind of like pegs or like stilts or pilings, I guess, for it to like stand on. So it would be at the right height to not um, run into the other pieces of plastic on the turret. 
And so when I saw that working, I decided to, you know, put that on top of the hull and just see how it would look. And, you know, if everything worked, nothing was rubbing. And that was really exciting because I wasn't sure how smooth the rotation was. And I was really happy with how it turned out. So next I decided I wanted to put a third seat into the mauler. I saw again that uh, Joe Mauler Works um, had done something like this or was messing around with this. And I was like, that's an awesome idea. So um, 3D modeled like a little piece that would go on where the door was cut off. I think they were more like sensors, but I kind of thought that could be like where the door was. So I cut the sensors out and I made the the piece so it would fit over but then still have an attachment for the um the antenna that goes there because there's supposed to be an antenna in the back and it's just a two piece that i put like a little wire like a paper clip through to be the um the hinge and that looked pretty cool and i just ended up gluing the sensor on top of that the problem with this though is that the color doesn't match and it's like a really strange color the mauler it's like this orange kind of color so i had to mix up a bunch of paints to um to kind of try to match it as best I could, but I was pretty happy with how it came out. Yeah, and now having the ability to have a third person in your mauler is just like really cool. I mean, you know, I guess that's like the commander post or the gunner post, and then you have your driver and your commander down there. I always assume the mauler is an auto loader, so you don't need a loader position. So a three-man crew is just kind of perfect for this. And here you can see me doing some tests, kind of making sure the guy um, would fit that he wouldn't interfere with anything with the turret, that he looked natural. And so this was even more exciting. Got the turret rotating, got the tank rotating, moving. Got a third guy in the turret as it's rotating. So things are going well. You just need the cannon to elevate. My plan to elevate the cannon was to simply use a servo and have that sort of tilt the cannon up and down. And here you can see I've, I've hot glued a servo down onto the top of the turret or the bottom of the turret and you can see that motion would kind of you know drive the um the elevation of the cannon and then here i'm trying to figure out how to put in a, a sort of axle or you know a bar across that the um the cannon will rotate on because the toy itself just has these like little nubs that kind of work off friction and that's how they they move up and down or stay in place but we needed like a real bar to go through that would then you know, use the servo to drive it up and down. So I'm drilling through the, um, the plastic right now. And then my idea is to use one of those, um, those hex wrenches you get with Ikea furniture. You know, I have like a hundred of those left over from everything we've built. And I'm going to put that through the, um, through the hole and watch here. I just, um, I just cut my finger pretty bad. You can see the, the blood coming out there. <laughs> so wear safety gloves, but it did work. Like you can see there, like rotating, it works really well. And you can also see now I'm wearing a bandage on my thumb because of the, um, the accident I had. But here I'm cutting the, um, I think it's called a servo horn, the piece of plastic that goes on the end of a servo. And I put that onto the shaft, which will drive the elevation of the cannon. And I'm going to connect that to the servo using a paper clip. You can get real servo wire, which is a little sturdier, but um, I didn't have any, so paper clip was fine. And this didn't need to be really strong. So you can see there, as the servo, the simple motor just goes back and forth. It just drives that, um, that little horn and rotates the, the, um, the cannon up. Now the problem with this is like the turret on the mauler is so short, there's no room in there. So I had to keep cutting things off. And here you can see I'm even grinding it down. I have the shaft going through the cannon, going through um, washers. And that's what I used as sort of like a cheap bearing kind of substitute. You can see it there. So I really had to shave things down to make it fit. And it all worked. This is my first test, really trying out everything together. So you can see the turrets rotating, the cannons elevating. Um, the third seat looks really good. I mean, it's awesome seeing heavy metal in there. And, you know, it rolls along. Um, you know, the motors are working good and the treads are working great. The last bit was some repro stickers and called it done. So now let's see the RC Mauler in action. Yojo. Man, heavy metal. This heavy artillery laser doesn't even feel that heavy. Pulling it around with this awesome new Mauler tank we've got. I agree with you, Toll Booth. She's a great tank. All right, I'm gonna scan around. Rotating turret right, elevating cannon, looking for targets. Looks like this area is clear. 
Keep going forward, Tollbooth. And don't you worry, Flash. We'll find a good place to put this laser, so you can fend off those Cobra attacks that we think might be coming up here in this northern area. Well, gentlemen, I appreciate the ride and the tow. You're really doing me a service. Boy, not a lot of room to maneuver here with these rock formations. But the mauler's eating up this terrain with no problem. Looks like the, uh, the laser's holding on pretty good, too. That tow hook's handling this no problem. Tow booth, keep going up here, through this crevasse. It looks like it opens up ahead. That'll give this laser a nice, uh, nice field of fire. I think you'll be happy with this flash. Good, All right, good. yeah, just take it forward a little bit more. Head up to these hedgerows, and that should be good. Sensor's engaged. I'm scanning. Rotating turret right. Elevating. Things look clear. All right, Tollbooth. Let's stop right here. Guys, this position looks great. Glad to hear that, Flash. Here, let me access this, uh, this storage container area. Get my sledge out. And I'll help you unhitch the old heavy artillery laser. Oh, there we go. Alright. Hydraulics going into position. And then just get these legs moved out. Just a couple hits with the old 20 pound sledge. It looks like we're good to go. Toe booth. Remind me to bring you on all my missions. That was a real help. I really appreciate it. Alright, looks like I got a great field of fire. Just glad I could help out there, Flash. Well, I'll tell you guys, once we get back to the pit, there's a 12-pack of Yojo Cola on me. You're a real swell guy, Flash. Always fun working with you. All right, let's get out of here, Tollbooth. You got it, Heavy Metal. <laughs>